Hello and welcome to the Man of the Match podcast after Liverpool beat Napoli 1-0. Look, it's free view week, so we're on YouTube doing the Man of the Match. We do this every single game. I'm joined by Sai and Ross to talk through this. Basically, if you don't know the format, we, we have a minute to discuss each and every player that we've put forward for our Man of the Match. We have a general discussion about all of them and then take your comments that we've got from Twitter as well. So, we'll start it off. Straight away, Simon, who yep. you gone for? James Milner. James Milner, okay, it, interesting. It, 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 it was one of them weeks this week where you could have picked anyone. Yeah. Like, like sometimes we struggle when, when we've had a loss. We sometimes struggle to do these shows, but we still try our best to try and talk through the positives of each game. I was looking forward to this show this week because I knew, like, it... We, we have like first pick, so I think Ross had first pick this week. Yeah. I still changed my mind three times this yeah. morning, thinking, yeah. I think from Milner to Allison. To yeah, someone else. You start thinking. Yeah. I wish I had first pick this week, but this week I didn't mind. Do we have first pick? Cause, exactly. Uh, I knew that I'd be able to talk. Well, about before any of them before we go on to this, we put a poll out every single time on Twitter because we want to know your thoughts. That's what the show's about, really. Fourteen percent picked James Milner. Forty percent said Mo Salah. Eighteen percent said Jordan Anderson, and twenty eight percent said other. And we had yeah. we had like a hundred comments, yeah. which just shows just how many people are saying. It's because you picked Henderson, Tom. Yeah, well, I picked Henderson, I'll tell you why. And a lot of people have had a go at me, but fantastic. But yeah. that's for later. But just shows just how many players you could have picked. Just how, how divided we had on who was so good mm. because everyone was. But look, we'll get straight into it anyway. So si, your minute on James Milner starting now. So when the team came out, there was so much fume I saw on Twitter. And I was expecting it as well, to be fair, if that team came out. Like people saying, hello, you're open league, we're going to be, uh, shut up. I wasn't sure about the midfield myself, mm-hmm. but they were absolutely incredible. I could have picked any any one of the three, but I did think Milner was the best. He was all over the pitch, making tackles and interceptions everywhere and then popping up, receiving passes, I up, making three passes stuff. Made five tackles more than any Liverpool player, five aerial duels more than any Liverpool player. 54 passes, Matip and Robinson had, Robinson had more, but you kind of expect that when we're trying to keep possession higher up in defence. Mm-hmm. Milner was always coming up and made, made five key passes. Only Trent had more with six. Five key passes is a lot for a game of football. We do this a lot. Five key passes is a lot. You very rarely see that. He plays the ball through to Salah for the goal. Salah still does an awful lot there, like it, but Milner, Milner makes it for him by playing a perfectly weighted pass. And it, I just thought it was a perfect midfield performance. I love him. In those type of games, then big European games, he's like a man possessed the way that he's just everywhere and he just looks like no one can stop him. We've got some big games coming up in the Champions League and he should be playing in every single one of them. Yeah, no, I fully agree with all that. What we'll do is we'll have a rounded discussion, obviously, about James Milner shortly. Mm. But we're going to go straight on mm. to the one who 40% of our Twitter polls yeah. said was Man of the Match Ross. Therefore, I was right. They, well, no, sometimes yeah. the masses are wrong. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, maybe not in this instance because he was fine. Fantastic, but your minute on Mo Salah starts now. Cool, uh, so Mo Salah back out on the wing again, I thought he was superb, uh, he was a threat from, from the start, getting himself in the right positions, he should have scored uh, in the first five minutes of that first touch, but he fucked it up, uh, and his goal, watched it about this morning, it's just, it's just ridiculous isn't it, um, so basically I'm just going to talk through that for a minute, <laughs> uh, rolls the left back, not arse, just pushes him out of the way, shoves him, gets to Koulibaly, one of the best centre halves in Europe, Sends him for the echo, drops his shoulder, goes straight past him, and then he has the balls to nutmeg the goalkeeper. Arguably, he should have passed, but he didn't. Um, it's just a brilliant goal. And then his celebration as well. We spoke about this a lot this week, I think, alone. And you know, everyone's saying he's not happy, he's miserable and stuff. That, that just needs to get in the bin. Because it's like, fucking look at me. Look how good I am. He's confident. He wants to be part of this team. And he wants to win stuff. It's an elite mentality he's got of going... No, I'm capable of doing this shit and everyone watch me. Look how good I am. Um, I mean, the only criticism I could have of him is should I have more goals. That first one, and I think there's one later on where he just puts it just wide, he makes a wrong decision again. But I just thought, he, he's always a threat. You know, he, he going from being centre forward at, at the weekend to, to that and chopping and changing all the time, but he's just like, he was just bang up for it. And I thought, I thought he was superb. Yeah, yeah. No, he, he was fantastic. We'll just round it out before we have this. Big discussion. I've gone for Jordan Henderson. Fucking hell, Tom. I know. A lot of people not happy with that, but uh, I'll tell you why. Well. Okay. Three, two, one. Look, first half he did start a bit slow, and I think compared to the other midfield performances, first half he wasn't up to it, but then second half he came out like a completely different player. Obviously Klopp's had a word, and he was snapping into tackles like 
getting in there straight away, high up the pitch as well when he knew he had the cover. He didn't do it like mindlessly. He knew James Milner was behind him. He can go in there and he sets up that chance for Mo Salah when he drags it to the side. You think, wow, he's he's fantastic here. And he made 10 interceptions on the night. And a lot of that was towards the end of the game when we're pressing high up, they're getting tired, they're getting they're just putting balls anywhere they can to try and get it up the pitch. And he's in the perfect place every time. Every single time I saw them play the ball up, he was in the, the right area to try and block it. And he passed it well, but that's his usual job in midfield. But he added more than that today. Yesterday, sorry, he charged forward, he was brave on the ball, he pretty much every time made the right decision and he was even shooting. Like sometimes that's the right decision in that in that in that time and he did it right, you know what I mean? He, he, he for me just stepped it up and got us over the line there com completely and utterly. Um like I say, we went through the poll before, 14% James Milner, 40% Mo Salah, 18% Jordan Henderson, and 28% said other. Um before we go through some of the comments, let's just talk about Mo Salah. Yeah. He gets the goal, Si. He was a constant thorn in, in Napoli's side. And he was pushing the left-back over. Yes. The way the way he beat him wasn't yeah. to turn him. He Twice. literally threw him to the ground. The first half especially, he was just absolutely incredible. Like, just such a threat constantly. Koulibaly was brilliant yesterday. Yeah. And Salah was still getting past him every time. Yeah. Like, how, how many times was Koulibaly doing exactly the right thing, doing things that most centre-backs in Europe can't do, and Salah was still beating him every single time. Like, he just he just had them like the left back the left back absolutely had absolutely no chance no, the left no. back had an absolute nightmare but but then you've got you've got top class defenders who still have got no chance because again like I, I used the same phrase for Milner in my thing he looked like a man possessed last yeah. night mm. like oh, he was just that's, that's part of that celebration as well wasn't it that's his game face like yeah. he's set to go yeah. and win stuff but like I bet Cook with Bournemouth like going ah oh, kill the ball he's gone yeah. on toast there I'm not saying that's a yeah. fucking bad now yeah. yeah no it's true I mean. There was a few few instances he gave the ball away in at the edge of the box, but that's because he was trying one touch plays up and down the pitch. The amount of times we'd run up the pitch and it just be one touch stuff, and we got really unlucky in terms of the the final pass didn't come. So off. his passing was dead good though, because I think yeah. he was I think it was four on four, and he was waiting for something to happen, and Robertson made yeah. an overlap, and that ball he just put through. I think he went through to Mari, and Mari went straight to the goalkeeper in the end. But he's creating stuff as well. Yeah. He's, he's, he's putting yeah. himself in positions and allowing other people to, to be the forefront of attack. Yeah. Because that's part of our team spirit and what we have now. Is it's not like someone needs to be the focal point. It's a, it's, a, well, it's a team game, I know that. But like the team spirit we have of going, well, it's your turn to go forward. Now you go and make something happen. Mm. And he's part of that. As good as he was, that, that finish, like early into the second half, where he puts it just past, just past the post, yeah. Then he's only a few yards out. That's poor. Yeah. And there was a few chances like that. Mane was guilty of it as well. Where that was it, easy, it, that was easy it, to score than his goal. Yeah. 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 yeah Faris. Yeah. yeah. Like, but it's if Napoli had got the goal, like Allison doesn't make that save late on, then we're ruining them chances. And and Salah's nowhere near man of the match. We're probably saying no. He missed a huge chance. Yeah. Same. Same with Mane. As it is. Doesn't as, matter. As it is, we kept the most. It doesn't matter. He got the decisive goal in it, and 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 you can just talk about how good his performance was on the whole, which was fantastic. If we're talking about goals, though, that goal no. is unreal. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I didn't realise how he scored it because I was in the cop over the end of the over the end of the ground. I'm thinking, how has he got it through? We've got the covered everywhere, and and it was then like I saw the Spurs goal puts it through his legs. Where he, he drops, the, I think it was a Spurs yeah. second goal. Yeah. He's dropped yeah, his shoulders. Good, good well, shimmy. Very similar yeah. to the Spurs goal. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Fantastic, and then let's move on to the, like the midfield as a whole was yeah. just on top, top form, wasn't it? it? It it battled for us, it got us over the line, and we we spoke before the game. A lot of people were saying, "Oh, not enough creativity." A lot of people moaning on my starting eleven, saying Jordan Henderson's not good enough. We've seen this not work away from home in Europe. Home in Europe's a different prospect. We just look such more of a unit, don't we? But we were talking about this morning in the, in the office, and that's obviously the midfield that got us to a Champions League final, yeah. which people were more than happy with. But I think we're all guilty of, of having a narrative on people that if they have a poor run of games, then they're immediately shit. Mm. I've done it with Joe Matip, and like, I'm like, I'm eating my words now because the past two games I think he's been superb. But should people do it with Jordan Henderson because... I don't think he's he's not been as consistent as he was in, in 13, 14. No. He's never got back to that form. And then when he plays, he, does, he is shit. And then you look at his last game was probably Watford. 
but he was shit and he got sent off. So that's your last your last vision of Jordan Henson. You're thinking, well, he's not good enough for the team anymore. Yeah. But he clearly is because he's, he's captain of the club. He was, was captain of England. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's been around for a while. These games are a different story, aren't they? Yeah. Like I saw someone, I think it might have I think it was Andrew Beasley, I, I, I might be wrong, put up a couple of weeks ago, it was after the PSG game, and every, that was the big talking point, wasn't it? The midfield isn't good enough and all that. And he put up the, the stats, points per game, when that midfield has played together. And the points per game weren't good. Like, like As a midfield, they haven't got a particularly good record together. No. But those big home games in yeah. Europe yeah. seem to be a completely different story. They played... They, Played the similar midfield against Man City in the league last season, I think. I know Chamberlain played against Man City at home in the um, in the Champions League, but PSG at home that last night. Did you see? Did when they've got the crowd behind them and they, they've just got the energy and the legs to just get all over the pitch? And did they know nullifying threats and covering each other and then coming and passing the ball around and making run and making runs to try and pick the ball up, having shots at goal? Just, there's no way you can play against them. It's yeah. almost not a three-man midfield either, because when I was trying to do my play ratings, and I watched the highlights until back, he, he, people, even defenders in the tackle, like Firmino's another midfielder, essentially, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Robertson's another winger. Yeah. People are just everywhere over the pitch because they want to work for each other, so it's not it's not a three-man midfield. Well, and they, even, even yeah, Milner, yeah. Milner was like a, a, a right-back at points last night because yeah. he was helping Trent. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. The man we haven't spoken about in the midfield is Dean Wijnaldum, and he was yeah. fantastic yeah. once again. Mm. And it was, it was him getting up the field, it was him facilitating the one-twos up and down the pitch, and it was him at the end of the game, knackered, yeah. no legs left, keeping, keeping over the ball, and just seeing the game out. And that's composure at the highest level. It's a 1-0 Champions League win, and and we're all nervous in the crowd. I didn't have the bottle to sing You'll Never Walk Alone because I, I was just so nervous. Everyone's like, just get rid of it. Hoof it up. And he went, no, I'm going to turn yeah. the man three times and I'm going to play to the wing, lads. But that comes back to what you said on Monday about people going through that Champions League experience last season and using that yes. to in games like this. It's a learning experience for them all. Yeah, I mean, if we'll, I'll have a look at some of your comments anyway. At Kulvich on Twitter says, difficult pick, but I will go with Mo Salah. Not just that he scored, but his all-round performance was much, much more better than we have seen. Not sure Mar Mario Rui or Koulibaly will sleep well for some time. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. And then uh, next, I've got two more left, but we'll just speak about this one. MC Dalton says, Robbo consistently good throughout the 90 minutes and some brilliant interceptions and runs forward. Yeah. Robertson, like he would be my next pick after Jordan Anderson. Um, just let it be known I was third pick. Mm. But Robertson, oh my word, some of the breakaways, some of the balls that he played in, if for a better touch or a better finish, we we, we yeah that like first one for Mo Salah was that he kind of like oh. chipped, curled it yeah. on, on the half volley, but it was straight into yeah. his, straight to his feet. That's a, that, yeah. that, that that was another one that you might end up ruining after the game, yeah. Might, yeah. But what like what a ball. And just like constantly a threat, he's always tackling people. Ah, oh, uh, I, 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 I absolutely he's adore. Week him. Out. I, I, I know. I put play ratings. I can copy and paste it yeah. every week and just go. Same thing. He's yeah. up and down the wing. He, like I said the other day, he allows Marnie to do what he wants to do and express himself in freedom because he's either in front of him, distracting the, the right back, yeah. or he's he's inside of him. It's if just it, ridiculous. And he's always he's always defending. Trying to work out how he goes from being up, up the pitch all the time to being positionally. Astute and, and being where he is. Yeah. If any other left back that we've had in my lifetime at Liverpool puts in that performance last night, I'm going, wow, that's the best left back performance I've ever seen. Because he's doing it week in, week out, it wasn't even that remarkable what he did last no. night. It's normal. I, I bet Moreno I fucking hates him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but he, he needs to raise it. If Moreno can start putting balls in like that and consistently get up and down, be positionally aware, like you said, and go into tackles strong and come away with the ball. And never let your head drop, no matter what. Can't then Moreno gets. <laughs> <Can't do anything. laughs> gets in the team if he yeah. can do that. But I don't know many left backs in world football no, who no, can do no. that. And yeah. and he, he just like the, the way it is consistent. Yeah. Not once has he had a bad game really, no. where it's cost us. Maybe Napoli away, because there was that one lapse in judgment. But he did it last night as well. He missed the ball. He did miss the ball. He was unlucky. He should have no, probably scored. Every, but everyone makes the odd mistake yeah, in the exactly, game, yeah, but, but, it's, that, but it's, how, it, it's how you bounce back for the rest exactly. of the game, and he was, he, he was perfect. It was that breakaway where we get four on four, and he, yeah. Gene Van Alden puts the slide tackle in fantastic, and he charges up with it, play, and it ends up with Mane 
hitting it straight to um, Raspina. Raspina, and you're thinking that started from Robertson coming up, and he's just he's a winger, he's a fullback, he's the he, he might be my favourite player in the team. Oh, he's by far my favourite player in the team, and he's possibly my favourite player that's ever played for Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're looking at Allison. Let's talk about him. Adam Azmi says Allison, such a commander between the post. Big shout to John Matip too. What a rock he's been for the last two games for Gomez. Allison, first and foremost, that save. Like, he's put in some world class saves before, but I think someone put that he's just earned us 7.5 mil with that save because we got 10 million. Ten, yeah, 10 we, mil? we get 7.5 million for going through, but a, a group stage win on its own is two and a half million as well. If we bought for two, if we bought for seven, that's 10 more than mil. Andy Robertson. That save is, <laughs> yeah, and with change as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a 10 million pound save. That's Andy Robertson and Joe Gomez almost <laughs> <laughs> with that one yeah. save. No, seriously yeah. though, and yeah. just all game, just. Calm, he's a calm and influence, keeps everything safe. There was a time he came out the box and you're thinking, oh, what's going to happen? And he just shepherds it back into the box, catches it, he plays it out to the wing. Time he, wasting oh, as well. Time oh, wasting. The, the, uh, the, the ball goes out and the player puts the ball on his goal kicks before us. He picks it up and walks slowly over to the other yeah. side of the six yard box and the whole crowd cheers him and goes mad. Because I love, cause look at the state of what they were doing in the first half yeah. and they, when we were chasing the game. Yeah. Yeah. They were trying wasting like I've never seen anything. In the, and that was in the first half. And so we do it back and it's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I hate when Ben Foster does it. Yeah. But it's just not, we've never, yeah. we've never no. normally do it, do we? That. Apart from Carrie's time waste when he's, he shouldn't do. Yeah. <laughs> but I, it's just the best goalkeeper I've had in, in my life town, the yeah. football club. And it, it, he said what you just said there of like, it's calm and influence. Yeah. And it, I think we said it on Monday as well. Like, you just don't think that, I think that people are going to score. You just, yeah. you just sit there and watch the game. That's your sound. Yeah. Game, game after yeah. game after yeah. game. He's showing new sides yeah. of his game. Like like that save. Like the shot. The shot's pretty much straight at him. But but what he does is make himself big. Yeah, yeah. It makes it himself out. big and get and gives that fella pretty much nothing to shoot at. Yeah. And and like it's not it's not like great reflexes. I thought at first maybe like he actually got his leg. He got his he got his leg up after the shot. Yeah, just got there. No, he just he, he just made himself that big that, that by the time by the time the fella can have a shot yeah. there's nothing he can do he can't take a touch he can't pass it all he can do is it's it, it at Allison. Yeah. and and that's a, that's, a, that's a really underrated quality no I no and, and, he, and he finally got his chance which I that thoroughly enjoyed yeah. when when he, he makes that save and normally you're like oh, we need to show appreciation to you saying Liverpool no Alisson ah, Alisson yeah. the whole stadium because we knew how vital that save was that was the, that was the difference between feeling awful yeah. And feeling just on top of the world, and that must make him feel on top of the world as well. Should do. He's, he deserves all of it. He's becoming more consistent as well. Not that he hasn't been, but we, I think we said the other day he doesn't normally get the chances to show what he can do because yeah. the defense is so good, and he gets like the odd bit. But he just, he's hard catch a ball. But like the Everton game, where he'd spread himself for that as yeah. well. Yeah. And he's, sa- he's saving us points. But now he's just he just kept us in the Champions League exactly. in, the, in the last minute. And 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 another man who, who defended really well, kept us into the game. Virgil van Dijk. Yeah. Obviously, he gets a yellow card early on. That cruncher of a tackle, which was a bad tackle. Got the um, ball. What? Got the ball. He got the ball first and then nearly snapped the guy's leg in half. So that meant he had to be careful, Si, and, and to be <coughs> so calm and composed, nullify everything and be 100% yeah. sure of what he's doing so he doesn't get sent off. Wow. Like a lot of centre-backs, if they get a booking early on in the first half, you're worried for the rest of the yeah. game. Like no, no one was worried about Van Dijk because no. you know he, he very rarely gets a booking. No, that was the first time I've seen him go to the ground for a yeah. while. Yeah, and he got a yellow yeah. for it. Normally, he, like he's just so he's just and it, it was a great tackle. And I, I know you can't do it. Twenty years ago, you probably can't oh, do it. Yeah, and 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 like the, like the uproar when the ref gave it. Obviously, you see it back and yeah, it, and, it's and, a bad tackle. Yeah, you, you've got the argument that it could even be a red card. But but it's still good to see someone win it, winning that winning the ball with that tackle. Yeah, so. Yeah, the rest of the game was just incredible. And 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 it was it was his tackling after that Ross where he he gets across, but he's so positionally aware that what can the, the what can the attackers do in terms of the running up, and he's there constantly, but he's shadowing his man perfectly. He's commanding the whole back line. Oh my! I, I love how he wasn't afraid to put the ball out for a corner or yeah, a throw in either. Exactly. Like like right, like if he was under even a little bit of pressure, he's like, no, I'll put it out for a corner or a throw in because we can defend it. It's fine. Yeah, we've never had that either. No. I don't think it in my time. Yeah. I, I, even past two, three seasons, it's you know our attack has been our, our main threat. And people, you talk about people being scared of the front three. But you're an attacker. I think Troy Deeney said it. Like he hates playing him because you can't you can't do anything about it. And then yeah. what if you get past him? Well, then you've got Allison to get past, or he raises everyone else's game as well. Mm. But Joel Matip's been 
been superb the yeah, past two games good. for me. But I think that's a reflection on Van Dijk as well, because he's taken charge of that back line, whereas Matip was supposed to be Van Dijk years ago. And he doesn't have that in his locker, the ability to do that. He just wants to play his own Second game. half especially. I thought the first time there was a few dodgy passes in that from Matip, but the yeah. second half he was just, uh, yeah. uh, again, absolutely perfect in yeah. the draft performance. Yeah. And, and again, credit to Klopp there by just galvanising the team at half time and going this is what you're doing wrong Henderson this is what you're doing wrong Joe Matip this is what you're doing wrong mm. and then we go out there and, and, and knacked it all a man I want to talk about just before we're going to slowly start wrapping up is Bobby Bivac. Firmino well yeah we're, we're, yeah, get, <laughs> Bivac's uh, probably got three to the last 16 you know what I mean it's uh, who's the goalkeeper Sacco yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah but so look Bobby Firmino for me his passing was brilliant yeah. today his hold up play was brilliant but it wasn't like over the top stuff, he just kept it moving the same way like Henderson keeps it moving, but Bobby Firmino keeps it moving higher up the pitch, keeps it all fluid, keeps it going. The little like flicks round players for the midfielder running past them, unbelievable. You're thinking, where's he gonna go with this? Oh, he's just literally flicked it with the outside of his foot, two yards past the past the midfielder, took him out the game, and uh, he's starting to come into his own. We've seen him had a bit of a dip in form, Ross, but. That's by his own standards, though, isn't it? Exactly. I think, and that's yeah. why we're critical. And then he's, he's still my favourite player, and has been for the past season and a half. Yeah. Um. I fact, I know since he did Soldado with that little thing oh, against Villarreal, yeah. I was like, I was right in front of me. I was like, okay, sold. Yeah. Um. It is by his own standards. He, he's he's knackered, but he runs his bollocks off every game. And I know it gets to a point where you need results and you need some sort of consistency from him. Mm. But he provides so much more. Like I said before, you know, it's it's four man midfield essentially because when we don't have the ball. He drops deep and comes back and wins it and then plays it to, to whoever else. Mm. So he's selfless because he's not asked about scoring goals. Yeah. Uh, his assists and goals might not be as high as, as it have been, but he's still putting performances in week in, week out. And even when he came on as a sub the other week, he was like, I think he just needed a rest. Yeah. And it was, wasn't, I think it was Burnley for the last 15 minutes he came on and thought he was brilliant and he has been since. Yeah, no, he, he's just coming into a. Yeah. Back, back where we need them to be. So uh, again, you're talking about you're talking about all them chances that we that we probably should have scored. If they go away, then it's so much of that, especially Mane getting in behind, if Bobby Firmino dragging defenders all, yeah. all over the place. Quite often, he's the one playing the ball through to him as well. Yeah, he was absolutely he was absolutely amazing, and hopefully he does it again against Man United. My right word, it, it, like we, me and Sai spoke about it, and he, he's he's played every single European game yeah. under Klopp, which is. Madness to Shows me. Him, from the, Europe, from yeah. the Europa yeah. League and then, the, yeah. and then two seasons in the Champions League. And he's been instrumental. Even when he's not had a good game, he's been instrumental. When I say good game, I mean having an impact in terms of goal scoring. Yeah. He's but his role's impact. changed as well. So yeah. putting Salah up top means he has to come deeper. Yeah. And he's not in there, whereas last night he was he was a nuisance because yeah. he was further up the pitch. Yeah. And like you said, he was dragging people away. How are you supposed to defend that if he, if he doesn't have a set position? How are we supposed to mark him? And yeah. then, you have, then you have to worry about everyone else. It's like the Robertson, Salah and everyone else that's coming forward. Or oh, Trent. Yeah. This makes us a all better team. Absolutely fantastic. Well, that was the man of the match. You've seen us. Basically, we talk through all the player performances. But the final word is going to be coming out shortly as part of Freeview Week as well. So that's going to be on YouTube channel shortly. Basically, that's going to go in-depth on what we've sort of talked about there, but more so the moments of the game, the goals, the atmosphere, just the, the whole... The whole package basically is the final word. So, so. Something, I, something I wanted to talk about, but I thought I'd probably leave it for the final word. Mm. Is I didn't think we had that performance in us. Yeah. Like 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 one nil. Uh, as I say, we'll go. I'm sure it'll go more in depth. But for us to grind out that defensive performance, yeah. like it, it shows it shows how much we've come on as a team, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. It should, it should have been more though. Yeah. It yeah. should have been. Yeah. yeah. But it was one person we didn't speak about was Marnie, and he well, could have got that purely yeah. because I don't want to end it on a down note. He should have oh, finished loads of shots, yeah. Yeah. but he was in the right position yeah. anyway. Yeah. So whatever. But hopefully like he go say, in on Sunday. Yeah, exactly. And he's shaving them all up. He's banking yeah. them all for, for oh, United. Yeah. But like I say, all oh, that's getting talked about in the final words, so make sure you don't miss that. Thank you everyone for watching. Leave us your thoughts in in, in the comments. Obviously, like I say. These are our opinions. We want to hear your opinions. We want to know your manner of matches. We want to know why you don't think Henderson was man of the match, why you think I'm stupid. We want to know why Mo Salah is the best player ever and why Alisson has just basically earned us 10 mil and also made his price tag look mm. minuscule mm. in the same 10 seconds. Put that up, we play ratings. We think did, you see, did, you see, did you see what yeah. Klopp said in his interview with Carragher? No, no. So Carragher does a d d d Danish telly. And Klopp said, if I knew he was that good, I would have paid double for him. There you go. There you go. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal player, man. And uh, yeah, like I say, get on everything on Freeview Week. Um, there's a whole host of shows that 
the women's podcast, you've got the newsroom, the final word that we spoke about, we've got the build-up for United coming out shortly as well. Just loads of stuff, loads of boss stuff coming out. And um, Yeah, thank you. I really thank enjoyed that. Bets for United, man of the match? Naby Keita. Oh, yeah. I'd love a Naby Keita. It's either Naby Keita or Fabinho. It's got Naby Keita red play. card all over it. Yeah. It's oh, going to yeah. be a shit house and just mm, take someone out. Sorted. As long as we win. Oh, it'll get me a match if he does, for me. Yeah, yeah so you'd like take, take out uh, Fellaini. the main man, Fellaini. Yeah. Oh, no, Herrera. Oh. I fucking hate him. Yeah, well, well, that'll all get spoke about, and we'll be back for that next week. Make sure you shine up to the website. Like I say, this is a free week showing you what we do on the website. Yeah. There. So, yeah, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.